This is part four of me making a simplified inline four engine block. Okay, so the first major problem is with this. If you look closely here at the top, the top of the crankshaft of the pistons actually extrude from the surface of this, which is a big issue because if I put a plate on the top, then the bottom is just going to keep on lifting up, lifting up, lifting up until it fully separates. So um, I need to shave off four millimeters from this. So I've got the model for my connecting rod right here. I'm going to go into the first sketch over here and I'm going to reduce that by four mil, which is an easy calculation, just 10. And then um, I'm going to put a slight radius on these because if you have a look at a normal connecting rod, um, they all have slight radii. However, they're usually in two parts and mine's not in two parts. So this is just going to be aesthetic. So I will just add a radius on these. Okay, so I've just got a standard three millimeter fillet on them. I might make it slightly more so that it matches the general shape of those ones. But for now, I think um, three millimeters is fine. So that is this part of the um, piston. Can you see the connecting rod right there? That's what I just remodeled. And it is going to slightly just become rounded so that you can't, so it matches the rounding of this. It's just aesthetic. It's not going to make much of a difference. So that component's done. I'm going to change the filament in my printer to gray, and then I'm going to send it to the print bed. I decided I'll keep the filament white because it's already in the printer and I'm going to print the body in gray. So um, I want some contrast so you can actually highlight the function of the crankshaft. So I'm just going to print off five of those in case one of them fails. Um, and then I'm going to change these settings. I'll put an initial layer height of 0.3 because that usually works for me. Um, there we go. And then I'll put the strength low because for my model, I was getting ChatGPT to do some calculations and for the flywheel to have a proper effect, it's best if I have the crankshaft and all the components to have a low infill density, and then I make the flywheel uh, a higher infill density because it will have a higher inertia. So that means it's going to take a little bit more force starting up the crank, and then it should be able to spin for quite a while after that. So I will print it at 30% infill. All right, so I've changed everything to my preferred settings and I will go ahead and slice the plate and it's going to take half an hour which is fine. I changed it to gyroid as well. Then I will print the plate and whilst that is happening I will go ahead and work on the crankshaft. I need to make an attachment for the flywheel. Okay so it is at 50% speed right now. I only did that for the initial layer layers so I will put it back to 100 and then I will let's continue. Then I'll start designing the attachment for the crankshaft and the flywheel. Okay, so as you can see, there's an even amount of crankshaft like extrudence on either side. So what I need to do for that is um, keep it on the one side and extend it slightly. Then I can start modeling the um, flywheel and the flywheel attachment to this side of the crankshaft. The only thing is, I'm not entirely sure if the flywheel the diameter is longer than that or shorter than but since it's a model and if it's aesthetic i could just make it equal to so that um it's just nice to look at so this is the first part of the crankshaft the first thing i'm going to do is add a tiny extrusion that's bigger than this diameter on the right side um so going out about that much to match with this kind of uh, feature it's again aesthetic but um, if it adds to this function, then it will be nice because I do need it to be counterbalanced so that the inertia and the spinning of the crankshaft is smoother. So I will add this here and then I will focus on the flywheel afterwards. So that's done with the three millimeter difference. Now I can get to work on the flywheel. I also add a tiny bit extra length on this side since it's going to be shaved off on the other side. So on one of these planes, it actually doesn't have anything to attach to for the sketch. So I'm going to have to create a construct 10 millimeters, 10.1 millimeters away from the edge. And then I'll be able to make my sketches from there. And I'll just have to make sure that I join it. So I'll use that construct over here, select this as the plane and then make it 10 away from it. And then 10.1, I'll make it 10.2 for simplicity's sake, for ease sake. And now I can make all my sketches on this and make sure that they attach going this way. 
Okay, so I've got the flywheel base right there. Um, it's going to be simplified. I'm not going to add any of the notches for the belt or anything like that. So I'm just making a circular pattern so that it um, is used as a weight reduction. And I'll add only six holes. They've got four millimeter diameter. And then I will extrude them outwards to cut through the thing. And then um, I can reprint this part of the crankshaft and the other one. And then I can start assembling it. But um, I obviously need to refine it a little bit and to make sure everything works. Like I might make this diameter slightly bigger. I might add some refinements. I might change the piston heads and stuff like that. So I will just get on with all of that and then I will actually put them on the print plate. I'm going to refine this design a bit later on um, because I'm tired and it's a bit late. So I'll get the um, connecting rods off the printer and then I will go to sleep and then start with this tomorrow. So here are the connecting rods. Um, I will leave these on the print plate and then I'll get them tomorrow while I redesign the rest of it. So I'm making the model of this and I want the weight to be distributed on the outside of the disc so that it has a higher inertia. So um, I added a modifier, a circular one around it. And then I increase the infill density to 100% and the rest is 15%. Then this one is at 20%. Then I'll compare the weight distribution and make sure it's done correctly. And I'll see if I can attach those to the crankshaft. Um, I'll put it on the print plate now. So if you slice the plate and you have a look at the layers, um, you can see that the inside of it is gyroid like I want it to be. But then the rest is solid, which shows that... Um, it's 100% infill density, and then this one is just a gyroid pattern until it closes up at the top. So the print has started, I'm just going to wait for it to be done, and then I'll keep on working on the crank shot. So these are the two flywheels, they're very basic. This one I marked, it says 100% wall with 30% um, mid thickness, and it's gyroid. And then for this one, I just put 30% because it's a 30% full um, equal infill. And now I'm printing one with 100% full equal infill. And then I will print out two crankshaft pieces, like the full crankshaft, but twice, so that, but three times, so that I can try out all the different um, flyers. This is the second batch of crankshaft components. Um, it's going to take another hour and then I'm going to attach it to one more and then the rest of the components for the pistons. Okay, so I started with a few small refinements to the design and um, all I had to do was make a little bit of a slot for the component to go into and then I wanted to try a few different designs to maximize the inertia. So I have a completely solid one at 100% infill density then I got a lighter one of just 30% with the gyroid infill. And then I have one where it's 30% um, on the center, but then 100% on the outer rim, leaving about that much. And then all of that all the way around is 100% um, infill density. So I've printed all of those off. And to test them fully, I needed to print three crankshafts because I want to be able to spin the... Um, crankshaft and then for it to continue rotating obviously it's not going to do that a lot i will need something heavier to do that so like a metal disc or something like that so i'm going to have to wait for that but until then um i'm just going to practice it with the um plastic and see if the method actually works so i've got that on the print plate on bamboo labs right now so i'm just going to go ahead and mess around with trying to get the infill on the outside to be perfectly 100 percent Okay, so I'm just waiting for the third crankshaft to be done. I've got the third one on the build plate right now. And now I'm just working on redesigning the pistons because I've got the piston rods. I've got the crankshafts. I've got the connecting pins. So now all I need is the piston heads. I'm slightly redesigning it and then I will allow for it to um, connect perfectly. I made a small error because I didn't change the um, height of the crankshaft like section when I changed the height of the connecting rod by four millimeters so I need to reprint that but it's on the print plate now and for now I'm just going to re redesign the piston head okay so now that the uh, pistons are done I'm moving on to the body of this 
the only thing that I changed was um, I removed one of the holes on that side and I changed the text to say, oops, to say mark 13 and not 12 because it's now for my new crank shaft design. I also changed the hole diameter to 24.15 instead of 25.15 because I accidentally made the pistons 24 instead of 25. So instead of redoing all of the pistons, I just decided to make that slightly smaller. I can always increase it by a mil, it's not that difficult. And now I'm going to send it to the print bed. It's now printing the top half with the slight changes um, and it's going to take, let's see, three and a half hours, uh, three and a half hours. I put on 50% speed for the first layer, which I can change now. And then, uh, yeah, I'll be gone while it's still printing so I can't set the other one to print, but I'll set it when I get back. This print is starting to separate from the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner. So, I'm not entirely sure how to fix that. I think I'm just going to put a raft on it to increase the bit of adhesion and then reprint it. So, for some reason, my print was separating on the bottom and uh, bottom left and the bottom right. And I had no idea why. Until... I took the roll of filament off the printer and I was switching over to my white one because it kept on failing and I realized that it said PETG and not PLA. So um, my school accidentally gave me a roll of PETG instead and I just assumed that it was PLA. So I was printing it with all the same settings. The speed was messed up, the supports were messed up, literally everything, the bed temperature, the nozzle temperature. So I had to fix all of that. But before then, I tried to add a raft onto this and it did not work at all it just stuck to this and it would not separate at all it was only two layers as well like it stuck way too well to this and then um after it was done i tried removing it and the only thing that it would remove was the brim around it the rest stuck for the other one that was warping i realized that i stopped it midway um it had like a bend like that on it uh, on the bottom right and bottom left corner so I had to fix that and I changed all of the settings and now it's printing absolutely perfectly this is printing spectacularly so far you can see the gloss on it and it, there's no like hint of separation the brim is perfect and it's just going so well so far I'm going to print everything out of this instead of having white components and everything I'm just going to reprint it in grey I'll reprint the flywheel in grey as well, um, but it's just going to take a while because of the settings that I've used, but this is spectacular. So I'm now taking a massive risk. Um, this is all PETG, it's going to be printed on the same plate with all the same settings as before, but I changed some of the densities like individually. These are going to be printed at 20%, that will be printed at 40% to match the top of it. Then um, I'm going to print the disc for the inertia of the flywheel i'm going to print that at 100 percent density i'll put that on the print plate soon so they're all printing at different densities with the same material same um instructions on speed and stuff like that but it's going to be all at the same time and it's going to take nine hours 15 minutes that one that's on the print plate right now is going to take um is going to be finished at 10.55 so um, after that I will start this one then I will check the quality of the first layers and everything and if it's all good I should be able to leave it overnight and it should be done it won't even be done when I wake up actually it'll be done slightly after I wake up so yeah I'll set it then the only problem with PETG is that it takes a really, really long time to, sp uh, to print because instead of printing at 300 millimeters per second, it's printing at around 50 for me. So it is taking way longer. What would take normally um, 30, uh, three hours ish, two and a half hours. It's now taking six hours on 
PETG. So um, it's good for like a final, final design, not for prototyping. PLA is just like way better for that. So um, I'm just going to print everything PETG just for this one-off so I can get all the settings right, take a note of them, and then apply that for future use. So I'm going to print the crank shaft fully out of that, the flywheel out of that, and the body of the engine fully out of PETG. And then um, hopefully since the, my designs are refined, it should be fine and it should have enough inertia for the flywheel. So um, we're going to have to wait and see. This print is going to be done at 10.50 and then i'm going to start the other one it's got a lot on the print plate so um i will start that after that one's done and i'll leave it until tomorrow but that's going to take a really long time so i fully scrapped the pla crankshaft um and i'm going to print it with the petg one but again it's going to take a really long time so i'm going to leave it until it has finished printing fully and i will get back to this like later on tomorrow because i'm going to be really busy then so, um, tomorrow I'll get back to you with the updated crankshaft and the crankcase. I'll start assembling the crankshaft, testing everything out, making sure it will continue rotating as I test it out. I know it's going to be really minor, but I will just extrapolate the data and then make sure that it will work once it's fully made out of metal because it's obviously going to have way higher inertia then or i can just find some like counterweights some like bolts or something that i can just put through that will mimic the weight of a steel one and then i will just test that and see how quickly it's going to do it i'm also accounting for the layer lines because um they're going to add a little bit of friction on each one it's insignificant but it all adds up um friction from the piston heads all of that i'm accounting for so um it's going to be really skewed results obviously they're, they're not going to be any layer lines for steel so um that won't be a problem but for this i'm just going to be approximating it and seeing how well it works so it has been a couple of days since I last printed this and I've assembled the crankshaft and I reprinted the body out of PET G because um, I found out that my roll of grey PLA was actually PET G and then I had to relearn, I had to learn how to use it. So I printed everything from that and it is working way better now. It's spinning without getting locked up at all. And I added a flywheel as well. This is just... Um, really simplified it's going to be more detailed in metal because that flywheel is not going to add much of a difference for this so it's spinning way cleaner compared to the other one that i did and it's making a big difference most of the rest was kept the same i just made it some made some slight changes to the body obviously i upgraded the text this glass panel needs a bit of a change and i made that slightly longer as well as opposed to a couple of internal differences with the crankshaft so now i'm going to show you the original one so this is the original one. As you can see, there's actually some flex. It bows on there. I also fixed that on the new one. And if you spin it, it's crunching and sometimes it gets locked up. Like that. It gets locked up. Also, it's protruding from the surface, as you can see. So all of that was fixed with this model. Also, um, it is really tight for some reason. So as you try and spin it, Yeah, it does not do a lot. And that was completely fixed with this one. So if I think of any more design changes, I will update you and let you know how I fix this engine.